ValveTime.net. Hi, and welcome to the Valve Time News. Each week, we'll bring you the biggest talking points regarding Valve and the community. And now, the final news for 2013. Gabe Claus was certainly busy this past week as he continued to fly, making his last few rounds before heading home for the holidays. The largest gift from the past week arrived in the form of the annual Steam Holiday Sale, which returned on December 19th and is currently set to run until January 3rd, 2014, before likely concluding with an additional Encore Day. The sale has featured the return of 24-hour daily deals, 8-hour flash sales, the vote-driven community choice system, and the long-overdue return of event-exclusive downloadable content, which last surfaced as a ticket-based minigame during the summer sale back in 2011. This time, users are encouraged to collect and craft the snow globe trading cards we mentioned on the last episode, in a fashion similar to this year's summer sale. Cards can be collected by purchasing games, crafting other Steam badges, and by trading with other users. Once a snow globe badge has been crafted, the user is awarded a random item for one of several popular free-to-play titles, which of course includes the likes of Team Fortress 2 and Dota 2, amongst others. The majority of games feature a six-tier rarity system with the lowest tier dropping a common item and the highest appearing with the elusive unparalleled rarity. Crafting a foil snow globe badge will award the user with five separate items instead of just one. For you collectors out there, the snow globe badge can be crafted an infinite amount of times, potentially allowing you to receive limitless items and experience for your Steam profile. For more information on this year's Steam Holiday Sale, be sure to check out the main Steam Store page and the event fact. Be sure to head on over to the Steam Store page every few hours to avoid missing out on any of your favorite deals, and happy shopping! This week saw the arrival of winter updates for both Counter-Strike Global Offensive and Team Fortress 2 after the release of Dota 2's Wraith Knight event last week. The Winter Offensive update for CSGO introduced a variety of new weapon skins alongside a pair of new maps in the forms of Cobblestone and Overpass, both of which we discussed on last week's show. For the time being, only players with an Operation Bravo Pass will be able to play Cobblestone and Overpass on official Valve servers, as the game's development team is looking to ensure both maps are as balanced as possible before releasing them to a wider audience. Two new weapon cases were also introduced, both of which can be used to find a variety of the new weapon finishes included with the update. The first case, known as the Winter Offensive case, is the first entirely community-created box, featuring only designs submitted to the Steam Workshop over the past few weeks. As such, a percentage of each sale will be distributed to the item creators in a manner similar to community creative items in Team Fortress 2 and Dota 2. The second case, known as the Esports Winter Case, features a number of different weapon skins which are used to promote and support the Counter-Strike professional scene. Similar to the previously available Esports Case, a percentage of every sale is used to fund prize pools for upcoming tournaments around the world in a manner near identical to the interactive compendium from Dota 2's International 3 event earlier this year. We highly recommend heading on over to the official announcement page on the Counter-Strike website if you're looking for more information about the Winter Offensive update, including details about the brand new gift package and palette of presents items. Team Fortress 2 also received a Winter update in the form of the Smithsmiss 2013 event, which introduced a whole host of new cosmetic items and weapon balance changes. The majority of the new community-created items can be found by opening the Naughty and Nice crates, both of which have been dropping in-game since December 6th. However, if you're not that interested in spending real-world money on virtual items, Valve are also giving away free gifts in the form of gift-stuffed stockings, which are awarded to all players and contain goodies for good little mercenaries. Once opened, the user will receive three random weapons, a backpack expander, a name tag, a description tag, a tour of duty ticket for man vs. machine, and a brand new gift appalled item, which can be used to gift a select item to a random user elsewhere in the world. Premium players are awarded an extra item in the form of a secret Saxton gift, which when activated will provide a randomly selected user on the same server with a randomly selected item. As we previously mentioned, a series of weapons were also modified to improve the game's balance, a few examples of which are an additional max health bonus for the battalion's backup, a plus two health per second buff for the Conjurer, and a totally overhauled short circuit, among others. Head on over to the game's official changelog and announcement blog post to read more about the bug fixes and balance tweaks implemented with the Smithsmiss 2013 update. 
Oh, and before we close out this segment, we thought it would be important to mention the development team's closing remark from the blog post, which reads, 2013's been a great year for Team Fortress 2, and next year is looking to be even better. We've got some truly big surprises planned for 2014, and since nobody wants them delayed until 2015, we'd better get back to work. This statement became ever more relevant later in the day when players began finding new billboards scattered throughout levels. The billboard model, shown here, contains images related to the original series of class-themed updates, which are listed alongside cryptic information possibly hinting at the upcoming release of one or more major updates for Team Fortress 2. So, at this point, we really don't think there's anything better to say than, bring on 2014! While Team Fortress 2, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, and Steam definitely stole the show this past week, Dota 2 wasn't going to be ignored so easily. On Thursday, Valve announced the Wraith Knight Reinforcements update for the game, which, as the name suggests, has introduced five new heroes for the Wraith Knight Winter Game Mode, with the addition of Elder Titan, Queen of Pain, Storm Spirit, Templar Assassin, and Witch Doctor. In order to further expand the game mode, Valve have included two brand new rewards for Wraith Knight, both of which can be purchased using Phantom and Shiny Fragments. The first reward, known as the Evergreen Stalker, costs 14,000 Phantom Fragments and functions as a recipe scroll which allows the user to craft their very own rare treant variant for nature's profit. The second reward, known as the Wraith Knight Ferratory, costs 12,500 shiny fragments and features a fresh handful of exclusive items introduced with the update. Additionally, a number of new cosmetic item sets were also included for Luna, Drow Ranger, Skywrath Mage, Invoker, and several others. For more information, be sure to head on over to the announcement post in the Dota 2 blog, the update changelog, or Cyborg Matt's full changelog analysis. Dota 2 also surfaced earlier in the week with a rather vague announcement regarding an upcoming event named The Year of the Horse, which is reportedly set to arrive in late January, most likely to coincide with the Chinese New Year on January 31st, 2014. In a surprise blog post of the game's website, Valve announced that the team are currently looking for the community to get involved with this upcoming event by submitting new cosmetic items to the Steam Workshop which take visual inspiration from Chinese New Year, Chinese History, and Springtime. Valve will only be accepting submissions until January 15th, so be sure to upload your creations before then if you're looking to get involved. Also be sure to tag your items with the recently added Spring 2014 tag available on the Workshop. Unfortunately, little other information about this upcoming update is currently available, as the rather cryptic announcement page features no more than a rather fancy-looking red and white horse alongside a message regarding the release window. As always, we'll be sure to keep you posted when we learn more. As part of the winter celebrations for Dota 2, the development team recently removed the game's download queue from the Steam Store page after the player base recently leveled out at around 6.5 million active users. This means that anyone wishing to download Dota 2 for the first time is free to do so immediately, as Valve can now confirm that they feel the game's server infrastructure will be able to handle anything the community can throw at it. To stay up to date with all things Dota 2, head on over to our website and social media pages, which you should totally go follow if you haven't already. Go, go, go! Well, wait for this episode to end first. And with that, let's move on to something completely different. Following the release of the first Steam Machines beta units and SteamOS last week, Valve have begun shipping an updated version of the Steamworks API, which will allow game developers to create specific control setups for the Steam controller, which is currently being used in the 300-unit closed beta. The announcement post over on the Steam Universe community group encourages users who own Steam controllers to begin messing around by creating their own custom controller mappings for the built-in Legacy mode, which emulates the main inputs from the keyboard and mouse setup. Custom control setups can be easily shared with the rest of the Steam community by publishing them as public, which can then be downloaded easily by other individuals in a manner similar to how game guides are currently integrated into Dota 2. For more information, be sure to check out the official announcement post on the Steam Universe group. Source Filmmaker also joined the large list of headlines from the past week, with the SFM team releasing a number of important features with the version 0.9.8.3 update on Tuesday, the 17th of December. Alongside the usual number of bug fixes and performance improvements, the patch has also introduced the much-requested ability to dynamically scale bones and models in the animation set editor, potentially allowing film creators to shrink or enlarge characters and props, as shown by this terrifying monstrosity. Ugh. 
The Steam Workshop area for the Source Filmmaker was also improved as users can now upload custom maps, particles, materials, textures, sessions, shots, and even animations to the page for others to rate, discuss, and download. The Source Filmmaker blog features more information on the matter, including a link to the official change log. Now, if you're looking for some new gaming experiences, but you don't have enough money to throw at the Steam Holiday Sale, we just might have the thing for you. Valve-time friend and ex-writer Anwi recently contacted us to tell us about his real-time strategy mod for Half-Life 2, Lambda Wars, which was recently rebranded from Half-Life 2, Wars, after being in development since 2009. The mod has received significant praise and attention from the community and has recently been added to Steam Greenlight in the hopes of being officially added to Steam as a free-to-download mod. In just over two weeks, the mod has become the second highest item on Steam Greenlight with over 17,000 positive votes. The development team, which consists of Anwi and several others, were also looking to be in with a chance of winning the Mod of the Year award over on ModDB, and this is the part of the script where we would recommend you head on over to the vote for them and support their cause, but the competition ended on Friday evening, which just so happens to be when the roundup scripts are written, and then usually two days later I record them. Instead, we'll just recommend that you go and support the mod over on Steam Greenlight, as we're excited to see how well a high-quality mod like Lambda Wars can do once it arrives on Steam as a freebie. If you're looking to try out the mod for yourself, you can find the most recent version of it over on the download section of the official Lambda Wars website, a link to which is available in the video description alongside a link to the mod Steam Greenlight page, and links to everything else we've talked about this week, including a rather large number of full write-ups on ValveTime.net, announcement pages, blog posts, change logs, and much more. And that brings us to the end of another year of Valve news! Thanks for watching and following us over the past year, it's been a blast! Unfortunately, this will be the last Roundup episode for a few weeks as we're going to be taking a small break over the Christmas holidays to relax and recharge. Don't worry though, as just like last year, we're going to be releasing a number of other videos and content over the next few weeks, including game giveaways, a return of Valve Time Top 5, and more. All of which you should definitely keep an eye out for by subscribing or by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and our website over on ValveTime.net. Instead of buying us a present this year, why doesn't everyone just head on over to our Dota 2 announcer pack on the Steam Workshop to give our item a quick thumbs up? We really appreciate all the support. We'll be back with the first Valve Time Weekly News Roundup of 2014 sometime in very early January, so stay tuned. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you all in 2014. Until then, bye for now.